Oh, hello there. You're just in time to help me design the universe. Yeah, the last one was a bit of a wash, but God and I are buddies, so he said he'd let me figure this one out. I was thinking of doing something abstract, you know, because I'm an artist. This universe is going to have no numbers, I never liked them to begin with. And I've already decided the first planet is going over here. Then- uh, oh wait, that's not right. Shoot, let's try this again. Alright, apparently planets make numbers, so no planets this time. No stars either, I've pretty much gotten rid of everything, it's a completely empty universe. Uh, oh, come on. Alright, this time it's nothing. Not even the universe. You can't say there's one of anything because things aren't even a thing. Get it? Oh, for the love of- Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and today I learned that numbers are really hard to get rid of. Well, kind of. They're the product of logic, coherence, reality, which is, in and of itself, very hard to get rid of. And if you can't get rid of reality, then you can't get rid of its opposite either. Dream. They're two sides of the same coin. If one exists, so does the other. By simply saying, this is reality, you're classifying everything that's not in reality as dream, and vice versa. Making a reality without dream is hard. Because making a reality without reality is hard. They're two things that exist by necessity. They just kind of have to be there. And they aren't alone. Destiny exists by necessity. If anything exists, that thing is going to do things, even if it does nothing. That is its destiny. Death exists by necessity. If there's any life, no matter how you define it, we also need a word to define the opposite of life, the things that don't have it. And on that subject, when something's created, destruction comes into play. If we're going to start putting sentient things into the universe that live, breathe, reproduce, etc., desire is also absolutely necessary. They'll need to desire to do things if they're going to survive, or at the very least, they'll need to have an aversion to other things that endanger their survival. Despair. And should these creatures ever get wise enough to reason and think and develop their own lucidity, we're going to need delirium. There are certain truths in our universe that you just can't get rid of, no matter how badly you want to. If you were to give every living entity in existence immortality, for example, death would still be a thing, people just wouldn't be dying. In the DC multiverse, these necessary truths have names and faces. Destiny. Death. Dream. Destruction. Desire. Despair. And delirium. They are called the Endless. Existing on the edge of creation, infinite layers above the conventional reality you're used to, this small, dysfunctional family is made up of some of the most powerful and most important entities in all of everything. You might think it's impressive that the true forms of the new gods can dwarf the multiverse in size, or Dr. Manhattan can keep timelines from collapsing by barely paying attention, or fifth dimensional imps seem omnipotent to anybody in our lower reality, but to the endless, these beings are all tiny, dimensionless specks. I could probably go on about their powers and abilities like I usually do when discussing characters on this show, but their names really say it all, don't they? This is not the god of dreams, this is Dream. He's where most gods come from. I think what's more interesting is exactly how endless the endless are. Like, consider if you were omnipotent and wanted to kill one of them. I mean, sure, you might be able to kill one aspect of them. One point of view of an endless concept, that alone would cause realities to fall, spin, and shatter across time and existence, but said point of view would just be replaced with a new one. How can you kill the personification of an action? Or an idea that exists by necessity? You could say, I'm omnipotent, I do whatever I want. So there, destiny doesn't exist anymore, even though destiny is still totally a thing. But does that really work? Some people think so, but others don't. The truth is, philosophers don't completely understand how omnipotence works, even theoretically. They argue about it like physicists argue about quantum mechanics. Omnipotence might mean the power to do anything, but things that don't make sense might not classify as things. To quote C.S. Lewis, If you choose to say God can give a creature free will and at the same time withhold free will from it, you have not succeeded in saying anything about God. Meaningless combinations of words do not suddenly acquire meaning simply because we prefix to them the two words, God can. Nonsense remains nonsense, even when we talk about God. So the endless are so endless that even God might not be able to get rid of them. But it gets crazier. 
The endless are so endless that they exist everywhere. Why? Because it's necessary. Lucifer Morningstar once left to design his own creation separate from DC, and the endless cropped up over there too. They're in every comic you've ever read, every movie you've ever watched, every video game you've ever played, every battle you've ever seen. Each monologue and conquest and moral and story is ultimately a byproduct, intentional or not, of these seven concepts that exist by necessity. Go ahead, try to think of a hero who doesn't have a destiny. Try to think of a villain who has no desire. You've encountered these seven all your life, even if they've worn different faces or puppeteered different characters. DC just decided to personify them. Maybe it's time I finally introduced you. Destiny, oldest brother of the seven. He reads from a book chained to his arm, heavy and bound in leather, made from the hide of a beast that has never existed. It contains everything that's happening, everything that has happened, everything that will happen, every action, secret, plan, and meaning. It is the universe, and he moves it forward, unable to escape. His realm is the loom on which the fabric of existence is weaved, and everything is a part of him. Death, oldest sister of the seven. She's not blessed or merciful, she's just herself. Even as we speak, she's there for the young and the old, the innocent and the guilty, those who die together and those who die alone, burying them to the world beyond worlds. Animals, people, galaxies, dimensions, ideas, and gods. When the first living thing existed, she was there waiting. When the last living thing dies, her job will be finished. She'll put the chairs on the tables, turn out the lights, and lock the universe behind her when she leaves. Dream, a middle child. This one goes by many names. Morpheus, Sandman. One might be quick to underestimate the importance of Dream, but even as you try to imagine him now, he's with you. The two sides of every endless are not as opposite as you might think. One defines the other. Just as life is nothing without death, reality is nothing without dream. It's said that every god and immortal was first born to dream. They walk among the waking world for a time, and when they get old, they return to dream to die. Destruction, the prodigal and perhaps the youngest brother. Not long after death and dream entered the world, destruction became necessary as well. This endless is no doubt the hardest to find, as he abandoned his duties many eons ago to let his realm continue in chaos. Desire. You'll have to forgive my visuals. None of these pictures will ever do Desire justice, since to see her, or him, is to love him, or her, passionately, painfully, and to the exclusion of all else. To the point it risks driving most people mad. Never a possession, always the possessor. Desire is everything you've ever wanted. Whoever you are, whatever you are, everything. Despair formed when it became clear that some desires could not be met. She's Desire's twin, quiet and patient. It's said that scattered throughout her domain are a multitude of tiny windows hanging in the void. Each window looks into a different scene, being, in our world, a mirror or reflection. Sometimes you'll look into a mirror and feel the eyes of despair upon you. Feel her hook catch and snag your heart. Then we have Delirium, youngest sister and a curious one. Many, many eons ago, she was Delight, but something happened to reshape her. Delight is no more. If you think you've experienced it, it's only been a mild form of delirium. But the chaos of delirium makes possible the Order of Lucidity. She's the reason that we have reason and unreason. Said to know things that even destiny doesn't know, her realm is close and can be visited, but mortal minds can't comprehend it. Who knows what delirium sees through her mismatched eyes? Having such influence over creation, it can be said that these seven are responsible for every story you've ever heard. So the stories about them are stories about how stories are born. The Endless are at best, ideas cloaked in the semblance of flesh. Patterns, repeating motifs, the Endless are wave functions. Wait, what's a wave function again? Eh, probably doesn't matter. The stories that you read and watch appear to be adventures about characters making choices that cause certain outcomes, but it's really the endless making choices that cause characters to make choices that cause certain outcomes. Bruce Wayne would not have become Batman if death didn't take his parents. Where would Lex Luthor be if he didn't desire fame and power? 
Superman saved the world, the universe, the multiverse, and stood as a symbol of hope. Because despair convinced Krypton Star to create life on an unstable planet and manipulate the events so one life form would escape. We're so used to thinking of these things as if we control them, just because they're abstract concepts. But what if it's the other way around? What if they're the ones making the decisions? If you asked most people, they'd say nonsense. Ideas can't think, feel, or make choices. They don't have any agency. But they are agency. Maybe they aren't self-aware like you and I are, but does being self-aware really prove you're in charge of anything? If you had your entire memory wiped of this day and started back over from the beginning with every single condition exactly the same as it was last time, would you still do everything you did today in the exact same order and manner you did this time? And if the answer is yes, then doesn't that just mean the entire universe was always going to play out the way it's played out up until this point, including every decision you've ever made because ultimately everything is just caused by different subatomic particles bonding and unbonding, ramming into each other and dispersing? I mean, if you're given a physics exam and you're told to determine how far a ball would bounce given certain conditions, assuming you're given absolutely every important factor, you could determine exactly where that ball is going to land with 100% accuracy every single time. So if I went back to the beginning of time with knowledge of how every subatomic particle was going to move and what the implications were, could I predict exactly what you were going to do today 14 billion years in advance, almost as if you weren't making any decisions at all, but instead your actions are the result of your life being acted upon by subatomic particles behaving in very specific ways? And if your actions are just the byproduct of subatomic particles ramming into each other, what causes them to ram into each other the exact way they do? Well, according to quantum mechanics, their actions are pretty random and nearly uncaused, but to make a long story short, they can ultimately be explained by a set of mathematics unique to each particle, which scientists refer to as wave functions. Necessary principles are the ones making the decisions, not you. They're inside your head right now, determining exactly how you'll react to this information. And the next time you experience destiny, death, dream, destruction, desire, despair, delirium, you'll react again somehow, but I can guarantee that the concepts themselves will never once react to you. And that's how the relationship goes between mortals and gods, whether you believe them a physical thing or a conceptual law. The theist, the materialist, the question is, what do we do if our choices are just the result of some larger misadventure embarked upon by an endless? If our fate is bound between the pages of a single book, metaphorical or not, then that means I was always going to make this video no matter what. And whatever you take away from it, you were going to take away no matter what. Be sure to think about it. Because in a way, the knowledge that you would make this decision 1,000 different times, if the universe played this scenario 1,000 different times, means this decision really says a lot about you. And so does every decision you've ever made. Even if they don't technically count as decisions. Whether our paths are predestined or not, you are unique. A pattern that might never happen again. So make sure you're a good one. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching another one of my videos. I know this one was a little different from what I usually do, but what can I say, I like to experiment every now and then. I hope you enjoyed learning about The Endless, and if you like this kind of content, then be sure to let me know by liking, subscribing, and requesting more in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, then check out some of the videos on screen now, and of course, have a fantastic day.